Even a minor construction project is too big and complex for any single company to complete on their own. Think about all the different forms of skilled labour required to build your typical house. You'd need carpenters, concreters, bricklayers, plumbers, electricians and roofers. And that's just to complete the construction works. On top of that, you need to buy materials. Maybe you'll need temporary fencing, a side office and more. Construction projects always require multiple different parties coming and working together to complete a project. On any project, as a minimum, we'll have a client who's the project owner paying for the project to be built, a designer or architect who drafts the drawings and specifications, a head contractor engaged to manage the end-to-end project delivery and trade contractors engaged to complete specific scopes of work. Each of these different parties need to work together collaboratively. To do this, we need a way of defining the relationship between each of these key parties. We need to define the specific scopes and responsibilities. To do this, we use contracts. Contracts define each of these agreements and exist between the different parties involved in a construction project. In any construction contract, there are two parties, a seller who is providing a service and a buyer who is paying for the service. The contract specifies the services the seller is providing. For example, a subcontractor agreeing to construct the foundations for a new bridge. The price the buyer will pay for this, so the head contractor agreeing to pay $56,000 for these foundations and the terms and conditions of this agreement. For example, the works must be completed in four weeks and the subcontractor has to provide concrete testing, etc., etc. Contracts facilitate effective collaboration. Without contracts, it would be impossible to know and keep track of who is meant to be doing what. So great, now we know why contracts are relevant to engineering, what does that have to do with procurement? Well, procurement is the process of acquiring the external goods and services required to complete the project from outside the project team. It's the process of forming these contracts, meaning working out what we need to procure and defining exactly what we require the market to provide us. From the perspective of the head contractor, this means finding the subcontractors and suppliers we need to deliver the project. Some examples of the type of procurement we'll be looking at would be finding a supplier to provide us steel reinforcement for concrete works or finding a subcontractor to install the heating, ventilation and air conditioning in a new building. Through the procurement process, answers the following questions. What scope do we need to deliver? What's the best way to deliver it? When do we need to engage the market and run tenders? Who are the potential subcontractors and suppliers we can use to deliver the works? What information do they require to accurately provide us a quote? And once they've provided us their quote and delivery methodology, who are our preferred subcontractors and suppliers? If we've done procurement correctly, we will have chosen the subcontractors and suppliers best place to help us achieve project success. This means supporting all the project objectives. We want to choose subcontractors and suppliers who can help us to ensure we deliver the project ahead of schedule, under budget, and to the required quality standards. Too often, we can fall into the trap of choosing the subcontractors with the lowest costs, sacrificing other project outcomes. Furthermore, we want to fully procure the project scope meaning there are no major scope gaps leading to expensive variations and unplanned changes during delivery. And finally, we want to conduct procurement in a disciplined fashion. Through procurement, we'll be signing legally binding agreements with subcontracts, so we need to make sure we're following the correct process to avoid legal disputes at a later date.